Hey y'all, welcome to Brian's Home Lab. Today I'm going to talk about all of the components of a computer. I love IT, but kind of the one thing I feel like is that we all need to get back to the basics, especially if you're just getting new into it. This is kind of the place that you need to start just so you kind of understand every component that goes into a computer. So I have actually got a Dell Octiplex. Sitting right here is a Dell Octiplex 755. So this thing has an Intel Pentium running in it. I'm not gonna use this. I have no reason to use this in my home lab, but I kind of figured that I would break it apart, show you the components of it. So that way you had a little bit of idea of what each component goes and does for a computer. This way, once we go in and do some other things like when I'm doing a virtualization kind of class, I'm going a little bit about networking and things like that. But absolutely, I just kind of wanted to get show you a little bit of things about computers because I feel like a lot of people I just need to learn or want to know. So I'm going to show you the computer real quick um, and then we will start taking it apart and I'll, I'll get it taken apart and then once I have it fully taken apart I will actually show you all the components and all that. So look there it is it's just an old PC that I've had I've already got the back taken off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. And then once I have all everything out of it, I'll kind of show you what everything is. All right, y'all, so I finally got this taken apart. We're not gonna discuss how long that took me and how long I fought with the fan to get it out because I wanna use that on another project that I got. Maybe it'll probably just sit in my garage for a while. But so I'm gonna start showing you, uh, I'm gonna first start out with the main board. The one thing I did notice is this thing is extremely old. So I'm actually gonna only show you components that are what you would see in today. Um, a lot of these don't even use anything. There are some devices on here that you won't even probably see much more. So um, I will also say that, yes, I know this RAM is old. This is DDR2 and we are now like DDR5. So um, I just wanted to say that, that yes, I know this is old. That's kind of why I took it apart, but I figured I'd do and kind of show you all a little bit of stuff. So the thing I'm gonna go over is your power supply. Power supply, as the name says, it supplies your computer with power. You have a 24 pin power supply or power cable that's gonna supply your, mo your motherboard with power. Then you have a four point or a four port that is going to supply your CPU. These right here with the little L's in them, those are SATA power, and it will come with several of those. Um, you need those for your hard drives. Your hard drive is a two-part system, SATA power, and then a SATA cord, which will look like this orange one. Notice it's got a little bitty L in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yep, you should be able to see it, little L. So, since we're talking about um, hard drives and things like that. This is an SSD. So these have more, these are more reliable um, for you. These are what we're starting to go to, um, either a hard drive like this or an MVM, MVM drive. Then you do have a hard drive. This is a two and a half inch. Um, there is spinning, di there is one spinning disc in here and the data is written to that disc and then there's a, a handle that reads that data. This one is a three inch. That's what you're gonna see inside of more like servers, um, things like that, or just mass storage. Most of these are bigger and they're a little bit cheaper. There are more discs in this one than in the little one, but as it is, there is still spinning disc inside of here that it reads the data off of. These are more, um, have a higher chance of becoming corrupt due to um, just data loss or just wear and tear as the spinning disc everything knows as it spins it's going to do damage so hard drives are starting to go away um, you do use them in servers and things like that but we're going more to ssds next thing i'm going to talk about is the motherboard so this is your motherboard without your motherboard none of your components of your computer will be able to talk so power supply will come in here Right here, that's the 24 point, 24 port. And then on this one, your four is right here. So that's for your CPU. Um, on the back of it, 
you'll actually look and there are what look like wires or lines and stuff like that. Those are connections between each component inside of your computer so that it can talk to each other. The next thing is right here. This is going to be your CPU or the brains of your computer. Without this, your computer would not be able to process. So this is an Intel. Um, on an Intel, it just has like a flat surface. These are almost like there's pins on the Intel that these will just slip in. There's also a notch that you line up to mark it and get it set in there. Now, the way I was touching this one, you'd never want to touch a CPU with your fingers. You can ruin it. And um, you always want to hold a CPU like this with two fingers on the outside and then find that notch. And there's another notch right here on that little thing. And you have like, you're going to most likely be a metal grate with a lever. The reason for that is these are very delicate. Um, and if you don't get them lined up right or put the right pressure on them, it can damage the CPU and your PC it might not work right. So all computers will have that so that it pushes the perfect amount of pressure. The next thing we talked about is your RAM or random access memory. So as we talked about a little a few minutes ago is hard drives or SSDs. These are permanent storage. So um, everything is stored, going to be stored on this device when you need it. So if you need to come get it or anything like that, it's going to be stored on your hard drive in a certain location, wherever your computer deems it or wherever you deem putting it. But it does take a few seconds, um, like in the morning when you open up uh, your browser or anything like that, or like Word, something. It does take a few seconds for your computer or your CPU to tell your hard drive, hey, I need this. You need to go this file location to get it. That's why it does take a little bit longer the first time you open it. Well, what happens after you open it, then your CPU is going to say, go to your RAM or random access memory and say, hey, I need you to store this. We're going to run this program. I need to be able to open it quickly. So on average, you're going to have anywhere from, I'd say nowadays, eight to in a standard computer, 64. Um, servers have tons more. They can go up into the thousands of gigs for gigs for RAM. But basically what happens is this one is just a two gig, but the CPU is gonna say, hey, I'm running Microsoft Word, I'm running um, Google Chrome. I need you to store this on here so that they can get, so that you can get to it quicker. Um, this one is a DDR2, so it is old, but it all works the same. So actually, if you'll look on any of them, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to have a notch right here. And then right on these little long black lines, they're going to have, now uh, you're going to have a line where it'll line up. You'll have a hole or a little hole to put it in. Once you get it in there, you'll just take it and push it down. There's tabs on each side of them. They will lock into place. The next thing that we're going to talk about is your PCIs. These are expansion slots. So if your PC doesn't have something you need, like let's say a bigger graphics card or something like that. So if you want a game, you always want to go get that bigger graphics card, things like that. That's typically what a six, this is a PCI 16. If you look, you should be able to see right above it, PCI 16. So that is the biggest of the PCIs. Then right here, you have PCI-1. On a PCI-16, that's typically where you're gonna put see graphics cards, things like this. And what this is, is what 16 means, is there's 16 lanes or 16 bus lanes that communicate between this and your CPU. So each one of those lanes can transfer as data as quick as the CPU will take it, but they're not able to cross the lanes. That's why we have more space, especially on like a graphics card, you want as much data as you can to get to that CPU. So you can see it on your computer or on your monitor. A PCI-1 or PCI-X1, that only has one lane that communicates. Typically, these are used for like NIC, um, NICs or network expand, network interface cards. Um, so if you got on motherboards, you typically have one NIC, but some people might want to have a second NIC or um, something like that. That is where you would come in here and you can actually just slip it in to it. I will show you um, kind of how a graphic card 
Now, this is a graphics card. This is an older one. This is a DVI, but it still works. You would come in here. It's same concept as over here. It's got a little notch right here. You got the little two little ones and then a long one. And you're going to just come in here and you will slip this down in. I can get it. Hold on a second. So normally it'd be a little bit easier because but I'm doing this on a table, but it'll just slip right in there. And with this little um, plate right here, this is a back plate. So if it's inside of a PC, you'll actually screw this in or have like a clamp that'll hold this in place so it doesn't move. So if it moves, it can damage those little connectors. On most 16s, they have a little lever on the back that you have to use to open so that you can get this one out. A PCI one, um, you just slid it in. It's gonna just have two or a short one and a, a semi long one, but they're shorter than 16s. There are two other ones which are four and eight, but the typical two that you're gonna see is one and 16. The next thing we're gonna talk about, if I can get this out, oh, let's see. Okay, I can't get it out. But the watch battery right here, or a CMOS battery, this is what keeps um, like date and time on your computer. If these aren't chart or these are dying, you might notice that the time is different when than what it was yesterday, or it's not on the correct time. If that does happen, you'll come in here. There's just a little lever right here. You might need a little screwdriver or something like that to just pop it out. Now, if you're using a screwdriver on a PC, make sure to be careful. Always keep yourself grounded. Right here, you'll see several of them. They look like an L, which they actually go to your SATA cable. There's an L there and there's an L there. You will mark this or plug this in just the way it connects and it plugs into your hard drive like this. You do also have to power the hard drive. That was where those SATA um, power supply cables came in. This cable talks to this and that's how your hard drive talks to your CPU through a SATA cable. On typically on the back of a PC, you're gonna have a backplate. This one doesn't have it. I lost the backplate, but it's gonna be something that will, so when you have your PC in there, it'll line up correctly and it shouldn't move a lot. But you're gonna have most likely an RJ45. This is an ethernet cable or your ethernet cables or your network cables, whatever you wanna call it. This is an RJ45 jack. The next ones um, are USBs. Now these are just USB ones because it's an old PC. But on a US, or typically now you're gonna see USB-C or Thunderbolt, um, USB 3 or 3.2, 3.1 and 3.2, and USB 3 are gonna be blue or red, um, depending. And then you won't really see USB 1 anymore. You will see um, USB 2, which those are typically gonna be black. This cable right here, this is a, VG, a VGA. Uh, we're pretty predominantly going away from VGA. This is an analog signal. They don't really use them much. I do have some old PCs that still use them. Servers probably do because they don't need that high definition or digital. But VGAs are an analog signal. And then also on this one, it was a DVI. And this is digital and analog. So I can read either way. Then you've got HDMI, USB-C, all of those different things. But that was just a quick rundown of the components of a PC. A tutorial on just virtualization and how to start learning about computers, whether it be Windows, Linux, or virtualization and even networking. We're gonna get into it all. So please like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know. Thank you.